Okay. Um, we had a bit of a, a, an outage, and it was rather extended outage. Uh, Sunday afternoon, uh, we, you know, that's when it started, and so I called and uh, talked to the tech and they, or the the people on the phone, and they 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 told me that it was going to be 48 hours before they would be able to send somebody out, and you know, I was understandably upset. Uh, and you know here it's over a hundred degrees during the day so it was very hot outside and just a totally uncomfortable situation for 48 hours it felt like we were back in the you know 1800s or something I it, it's I really don't know how we survived but there really wasn't anything we could do about it so we just waited they came out uh, Tuesday and uh, replaced the modem, and so our TV and internet were back again. Well, we had power. Hi, welcome to Canis Spader Christmas. We had an outage, but it was internet and television. Um, but it's interesting how much I have come to rely on, at least the internet anyway. Um, my wife, more so the TV, but <laughs> we made do, you know. I had cell phones, so I was able to get my internet stuff done. Um, but it was, uh, it, you know, it was, it was interesting outage. And uh, you probably won't care about this at all but I got some new video editing tools they made me an offer I couldn't refuse half off the entire Adobe Creative Cloud for a year so I'll try it out so if this video comes out after Saturday morning just understand that I'm learning some new tools <laughs> I had a comment from Tom about this chroma trim. He uses a drill press to push the pixels into here. I probably should have done that myself. It is a little stiff, a little tough to get these in. Drill press, would, and actually I have used a drill press for strips before. But uh, this stuff is, is it's, I don't know if it's twice as thick, but it's almost twice as thick. So. Yeah, you, if you're going to push a lot of pixels into these, um, I highly recommend some sort of assistance. Don't just try to force them in with your hands. Another housekeeping note, uh, I was finally accepted into the Amazon Influencer Program. and Basically, it's the affiliate program, but you can now store or have pages of stuff you talk about on Amazon servers. I was running a separate page on my website prior to that, but now that I'm in the influencer program, I can uh, put stuff on their website, which makes it a lot easier for me and probably works better for you guys. Um, uh, I can just add stuff like it's a normal list and, uh, and then you hopefully will be able to see it. I know there were some issues uh, with Chrome because Chrome is encouraging people to have SSL certificates and my current website does not have an SSL cert. Also in the process of revamping that but that'll be a while. And I believe in some other countries some of those links might not have worked. So if you are outside the US and you tried to hit my page uh, and it didn't the links didn't work for you try it again see if they work now they hopefully they should and I'll just include that link in the video description if you want to check it out most of you are probably already aware that X lights does what they call X lights around the world and so this is the this will be the third year that they've done this they get everybody to sequence sequence the same song uh, submit their take a video of their display 
and send that video in and then they take all those videos and make one video out of it just by pulling different pieces from different displays. It's really a cool video. This year they're uh, doing it a little differently. They have, uh, there's a tool out there called Reaper and what that allows you to do is, since, it, since it's copyrighted music, they can't put a copy of the music out for everybody to use. But what they can do is put all the edits that they've made. They, it, there's a long song and they've cut it down a little bit, but they want everybody to use the same song. So you can make all your edits and store just those edits. You're not actually storing the audio file. You use this tool to apply the edits to the audio file and it makes the same edit that whoever started, you know, made, made at the same time. And so it works with Amazon, Google, and iTunes. So uh, I'll leave a link to that video. You can check it out. It goes through all the steps pretty quickly, but it goes through all the steps that you need to um, get, you know, get the music, download it, run it through this tool, export it, and so you have the same song that everybody else will be starting with. And then you just sequence the song, film it, and send it in. And hopefully before Christmas is that there's there'll be more videos coming out about it so watch that channel but um, they want to get the video out before Christmas so it'll be you know in time for Christmas and they can they can show it so if that's something you're interested in participating in uh, I will link the video that talks about getting the music in the description below and just follow that channel because they will have updates on when and where to send everything I had a question come up about the 5 amp fuses on the output of the Falcon and it's it doesn't matter if it's the F16 V3, the V2, or the F48, all of those have 5 amp fuses on them. And so if you have strings that are pulling more than 5 amps but you don't want to do any power injection then what do you do? And so my response was well you can bypass the power distribution in this board it just gets a little bit more complicated to do that so I'm going to show you how to do that. Outside of the U.S., uh, this is the neutral wire will be blue, the load one wire will be brown, and this will be green with a yellow stripe. It's the same thing, it'll be a different voltage, so make sure you set the voltage on the side properly. Uh, in the U.S., we have green for ground, white for neutral, and black for load one. Uh, if you have three phase, then they have a different color code, but we only use one phase. So that's this side of it. This is the AC input. This is the DC output. So you have one, two, three positive terminals and one, two, three negative terminals. So in this case, it is a 12 volt power supply. So I'm getting 12 volts out on this side. Okay, this is a typical setup. If you have an F16 V3, really any controller would be set up this way. So you've got power coming in to the power input jacks. This one doesn't have any power, but this one does have the power coming in, coming in 12 volts. So this half of the board is powered by this input connector. Coming out, you've got a set of pixels just wired into the output jack and we're feeding the pixels. So if you have, just pretend this is 100 pixels, and if you run them at all white, that would pull, theoretically, 6 amps, which is, would exceed the fuse here, which is a 5 amp fuse. So how do you deal with that? The first way is to inject power at the end of the string. You would just bring another cable from the power supply and hook it into here and that would basically half the amperage that this string is pulling. So, you know, you need to calculate and measure and all that to make sure you still don't exceed the 5 amps that the power the board is distributing but you know that that's kind of a, a rule of thumb there the other way to deal with this is to completely bypass the power distribution on the board and do that directly from the power supply so let me get that set up and i'll show you what it looks like okay so all i did was pull this positive wire off of the connector that goes into the board i also move this fuse out of the way just to prove that I'm not using power on port 15 here. Uh, this goes to this cable here which basically goes to the output of this hex fuse and let's not ground that out. 
Um, so this hex fuse is uh, from Hanson Electronics and you basically come in here and it provides you two fuses per leg. So I'm coming into this first leg here uh, and then coming out of the first leg. It goes through these two fuses. So it comes through this cable. We're feeding the pixels with that. So the power on the board has now been uh, bypassed and we're going through these two fuses here for to power this leg of pixels. So if you need to bypass the power on really any of these boards uh, because you're going to exceed the power and you don't want to inject power then you can start with feeding the pixels with something directly off the power supply. Now if you are doing this you do need to insert your own fuse. These The boards have fuses to protect really the board but also any shorts that you may have in your line. If you're going to go directly to the power supply it's highly recommended that you have some sort of fuse in line. Now there are a couple of options. This is a 10 gauge wire but so I don't suggest using that for this but you can get smaller gauge wire on this but this just basically is a fuse an inline fuse holder you cut this you would wire it in between your pixels and the power supply and then put your fuse in there and that would protect that single wire so that's another option to use if you are going directly to the power supply and finally, Brian had a question about the 1024 ports and how that is shared and all that kind of stuff. So I'm going to try and explain that both on an F16V3 and the F48 to hopefully clear up some of that confusion. Because I know several of you, if you're just getting started in this, will probably have the same question. To show you how I have all this hooked up, uh, I've got AC power coming in here. I've got DC power coming out here. It comes out through this cable into this hex fuse and I'm coming out of the hex fuse through all this wire and I'm just plugged in here to one of the ports on an F16 V3. You can power it that way on the bench. I wouldn't suggest doing that in you know a production display kind of situation but um, but it is perfectly fine to do this on the bench. Now I have this ribbon cable going over to one expansion card. Now it'll power the expansion card, but um, you don't. It, these ports won't have any power to them. So the F16V3 has got 16 output ports. A F16V3 expansion card also has 16 output ports. So if we had another F16 expansion card, can you see that? That's a picture of an expansion card. So if we have this other third expansion card, we would come from here and go over to that third expansion card. So I wanted to talk about port sharing or, or pixel sharing or whatever it is. So the manual says an F16 V3 can support 1024 pixels per port. Now that is without any expansion cards. When you add this expansion card it splits that in half. So in other words it shares each of these 16 ports shares 1024 pixels. If you add a third card into it the, th the three split that into a third. So let me show you what that looks like on the computer and how you can you can make adjustments to which one of these gets you know what pixels so you can you can have you can set the F16 V3 to have 100 pixels and this second expansion card to have 90 or 924 pixels or whatever makes sense for your display now if you go to the string ports page and uh, for now this is the F16 V3 so you actually have I have one expansion board connected to this and so now what you see is over here the main and expansion board has split that 1024 down to 512 so port 1 on the F16 V3 can support 512 nodes port 1 
on the expansion board can support 512 nodes. And you can adjust this slider however you want. So if you only want the F16 to to have 100 nodes, then you have nine you can support 924 per port per output port on the expansion board. Similarly, you can slide this all the way over here and you can support 100 nodes on each of the expansion ports and 924 nodes on each of the F16 V3. So it, you know, that's how this is split up. Uh, and by default, it splits them up equally. On the F48, you have ports 1 through 4, 17 through 20, 33 through 36. So this is 1 through 4, 5 through 8, 9 through 12, 13 through 16. So this represents, these top four represent 16 ports on an F16 V3 or an F16 V2. So you hook these little receiver boards on there. They have four ports. So this is 1 through 4, 5 through 8, 9 through 12, 13 through uh, 16. And then we start 17 through 20. So we have one board plugged into here, one into here, and one into here. This is the configuration page on the F48. So if we go to that string ports page, that one already has, there's nothing you can select over here because this one has all the available ports on it. So this one is proportioned 341, 341, 342. Again, you can do whatever you want to here. Like if you wanted 100 just on the first section, you could do that. This would be 582. This would be 342. Or if you needed more in the center, so, you know, so you can set these wherever you want to set them, but you must set them. Um, so go back go back because we didn't save it so 341 341 342 is the the best even distribution so what does that mean for these three connectors port one on each one of the boards will share 1024 pixels so same thing for this column same thing for this column same thing for this column Actually, this might be a better way to look at this. I have the F48 tilted to the left, so we've got 1 through 4, uh, 17 through 20, and 39 through 36. So this is 1 through 4, this is 17 through 20, and this is 33 through 36. So this, the, the outputs on this board correspond to all uh, the, the left side of the slider. This is the middle of the slider and this is the right side of the slider. Well that about wraps it up for this episode. I hope your Labor Day weekend is fun or was fun depending on how long it takes me to get this video out. <laughs> if you have any questions leave them below. Other than that thanks for watching and I'll see you again soon.